If you just got the Sony a7R5, I'm gonna help you set it up. I'm gonna set up my a7R5 for my liking for photography and for video. And so grab your camera, follow along, and uh, let's set it up together. Oh, and uh, if you wanna download my a7R5 camera settings, then the link will be down below, free of charge. You're welcome. All right, let's rock and roll. So when you turn on the camera for the very first time, you're going to see the language menu. Obviously, choose the language that you use. I'll be using English. Uh, you're gonna click on I understand. And then here is where you set your area, date, and time. This is gonna apply to your time zone and to your date and time. And so, yeah, you, you set that up. All right, so once you set your area, date, and time, it's gonna take you to this menu and you're gonna select set now. And basically what this is, is that it will allow your camera to keep working even if it starts heating up. With previous Sony cameras, you had to go deep into the menu to turn on the temperature to high so that it won't shut off uh, when it gets a bit too hot. So it's kind of cool that they're offering that option right off the bat when you set up your camera. And so, yeah, go ahead and select set now. All right, cool. So registering your smartphone, uh, I'm not gonna do that here. You can do that on your own. Basically what it means is that you can pair your phone with the camera so that you can control the camera with your phone and transfer photos and videos. And so we're not gonna do that now. We're gonna skip it and go straight to the settings. Uh, before we get into the menu, just make sure on the mode dial, you are set to photography mode. There are three different modes on the camera photography mode, movie mode, and SNQ. You'll see the icons on the dial mode. Just go to the picture that looks like a camera. That's photography mode. All right, so I'm gonna do that right now. So now we're in photography mode. And then on the top dial, make sure that you are on the M for manual because we wanna manually set the photography settings in our camera. And once you're there, let's go ahead and go into the menu and start setting it up. I'm gonna hit the menu. And what's really cool about the a7R5 is the new tile menu system. It's pretty cool because as you see on the screen, there are different tiles to adjust certain settings. Right now it's selected on the shutter speed and we'll keep it to 1 250th of a second. That's pretty standard for a photography. You can go higher if you're shooting action shots or you can go lower to capture more motion blur, but we'll just leave it to 1 250th of a second for now. Next to it is the aperture. An aperture kind of determines uh, how much depth of field you have in your shot. I like shooting at a lower depth of field just to have that nice blurry background or bokeh. And so uh, we're gonna set that to the lowest aperture possible, which is F 2.8. Cool. And the tiles next to it, uh, that's the exposure compensation and basically with auto exposure, your camera will determine the right exposure settings depending on the environment that you're in. And if you are using auto ISO, then exposure compensation is gonna be your best friend. Right now it's set to zero, which is standard. And basically with that, your camera will try to expose it as evenly as possible. But if I select it and go down a little bit more, then my camera will underexpose just a little bit. And then you can determine how much you want to underexpose, whether it's negative 0.3 or negative 0.7 or negative one, or you can overexpose it if you want to. We're just gonna bring it down to zero just to keep things even, but you don't have to use auto ISO for photography. I mean, oftentimes I don't like using auto ISO. Like if I can, I try to shoot at the lowest ISO possible to avoid any noise in my photos. And so we're just gonna change it to an even ISO 100 and just change it from there depending on where I'm at. Uh, all right, cool. So let's go to the tile below that and that's gonna determine the image quality of our photos. We're gonna go to file format and uh, I like shooting raw and JPEG just because I have a large enough SD card to, to handle all that. Uh, you don't have to shoot raw and JPEG if you don't want to. If you'd rather just shoot RAWs, you totally can, or JPEGs, you totally can too. Just keep in mind that when you are shooting RAWs, you have more flexibility to change up all the exposure and color values in post versus having to edit JPEG photos, which are very, very compressed. You don't have that much leeway as you would with raw photos. But because I have a fast and large enough SD cards, I'm just gonna select raw and JPEGs. And then if you go down, you can select the raw file type. Uh, I like shooting an uncompressed raw. Like I just want all the data. I don't want anything compressed. But if you're trying to save some space and you still wanna shoot raw photos, there are different levels of compressed raw that you can choose from. And then going down to JPEG quality, I'm gonna select extra fine because why not? And then JPEG image size, we're gonna select 60 megabytes because I have a capable enough uh, SD card. If you wanna save some space, you can bring it down to the lower values, but I'm gonna select 60 megabytes. And, and then we're done for that section. Moving on to the tile next to it is where you save your photos. And there are two SD card slots in the a7R5. You can select the top slot if you want to, or the bottom slot. For me, I like separating my media. On slot number one, that's usually where I save all my videos. Videos. And in slot number two is where I usually save all my photos. It just makes it easy for me to like determine which SD card has what type of media. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Sometimes it is easier having everything on just one, uh, one SD card. And the cool thing with doing just that is that you can also shoot duplicates to the second SD card slot just to have some backup. But we're just gonna select slot number one for now. Here it says performs quick format. That'll erase everything on your SD card. So if you have 
photos or videos on that SD card, make sure to offload that now and then put it back to the camera so that you can format it. Cool, cool, cool. Formatting, formatting complete. All right, moving down, that's the aspect ratio for photos. Uh, usually I just keep it to three, two. That's just a standard aspect ratio. However, if I am shooting YouTube thumbnails, that's usually at a 16 by nine aspect ratio. That's really more specific for me making YouTube thumbnails. You don't have to do it. I like using it sometimes, but we're just gonna leave it to the standard aspect ratio at three, two for photography. Uh, let's go all the way across to this little box thingy here. That determines the drive mode. Right now it's set to single shooting. And so when I press the trigger button, it'll take one photo. If I select high speed, then it's going to take a lot of photos very, very quickly. Using the high speed settings is great for capturing action shots. And here you can actually determine the actual speed for, for high shooting. There's high shooting, which is fast. There's high plus, which is very, very fast. And then you can shoot at a lower uh, speed at mid or even low. But we're just going to set it to single shooting for now because I don't really do much action shooting, but if you do, then yeah, definitely choose a higher shooting speed. Okay, we're set for that. Uh, this is more for flash. Uh, I don't really use flash photography all that often, and so we're going to skip that. So uh, for you flash lovers out there, sorry, can't help you there. Next to it is flash compensation. Again, I don't do flash, and so uh, we're gonna skip that, but we are gonna go to the white balance. Now you can stick with auto white balance. I mean, I, I shoot auto white balance quite often, and especially if I'm shooting raw, it's just easier to change things. But if you much prefer shooting at a consistent color temperature, then uh, you can change that to like daylight, which is very common. We'll stick with daylight for now because it's nice to have consistency through all my photos. And then going down to the last two settings in the tile menu, uh, this is the focus mode. We're just going to set it to continuous autofocus just because, I don't know, my, I've been using that setting for all my other Sony cameras, and so we're gonna choose that setting. Usually with continue autofocus, that kind of pertains more to video, but you know, it should apply for photography as well, and so we're gonna select that. And then focus area, that's gonna determine where you are focusing at. Uh, the Sony a7R5 is great when it comes to autofocus. Like when you're using the AI face memory recognition, like it's it's so sick, we'll get into that later. But usually when it comes to photography, I like selecting one small point on my screen to focus on. It's like an old school way of doing things, but I, I prefer it. But you can choose whatever focus area you want, whether it's utilizing the entire width of the screen or zones like you can do the middle zone the top zone or the left zone right bottom that's fine and all but i like shooting uh, the center fix just because I, I like centering on things and just recomposing afterwards before taking the shot all right so that's that for the tile menu uh, we're gonna go through a couple more settings for photography uh we'll go to the left tab and uh, we're just gonna go down uh this tab we've kind of covered most of the settings if we go down over here uh that will determine which sd card is capturing what like i said before i like capturing all my videos on slot number one and all my photos on slot number two. That's going to be my preference, but if you'd much rather have a backup of your photos, then make sure you select simultaneous recording so that it captures photos on slot number one and slot number two. But for me, all my photos will be taken on slot number two and all my videos will be taken on slot number one. Cool. All right, moving down, uh, let's go to this menu and uh, we're gonna go to file folder settings. Now I like having all my videos and photos have their very own file name, just because it makes it easier to archive and pull up different projects. Like I don't wanna pull up the same image 0001 because that could confuse my computer. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna customize our file names. We're gonna leave it as series and we're gonna go down and change this setting. And instead of having DSC, because I don't know, that's a dumb name. And so we're just gonna change it to the name of the camera. And that way, if I'm importing different photos from different cameras. I'll know which photo was taken with the a7R5. And so let's go ahead and change the name. And since you can only use three characters uh, for this section, we're just gonna do A, R, five. We'll just skip the seven and then hit okay. And then if you look at the bottom, you'll see a preview of the file names and then hit okay. And then I'll go to the folder name and you can leave it to a standard form, but it's kind of nice having different folders with different dates. And again, me, I like being really organized. And so I'm gonna select date form. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so we'll go to there. Uh, let's go ahead and go back. Here is where you put in all your copyright information. I don't really do that, but uh, you totally can if you want to, you know, information like your name, your website, something like that. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. But if you want to, you totally can. Okay, moving down, uh, let's see, we've covered most of these settings. Ah, okay. So if you want to save these exact photography settings uh, to the camera, uh, you just go down to shooting mode and you go to camera set memory. And if you select that, you have a few slots to save those exact camera settings. So this will be my main camera setting. And so we're going to select memory number one. Sweet, and you can access that with the uh, the top dial over here. Uh, you'll see different letters and numbers. If you go to custom dial number one, that will bring up the exact photography settings on the camera, which is really cool. And if you have other camera settings that you wanna set, like 
high speed photography or whatever, you can save those different photography settings and the other custom dial slots. This is really cool and probably one of my favorite features of all Sony Alpha cameras, the fact that you can just switch from custom dial to custom dial to activate a different settings. Like I do that all the time for photography and video. Like oftentimes I'll just go to custom dial number one for my usual photography settings. And if I need to capture a YouTube thumbnail with an aspect ratio of 16.9, then I can just go to custom dial number two or three and it'll automatically readjust my camera settings to capture YouTube thumbnails. And so yeah, that's a really cool feature and I just love using the custom dials in Sony cameras. So now in my main photography settings, we're set to custom dial number one. And uh, you know what, let's go ahead and change uh, some settings so that I can capture YouTube thumbnails at an aspect ratio of 16.9. And so we're gonna go back into the menu and we're gonna go to, oh, let's see, where is it? Ah, there it is, image quality. We're gonna go to aspect ratio. We're gonna change it to 16.9. I'll keep the other photography settings for now. That's totally fine. And then we're gonna go back a tab, go down to shooting mode, and we're going to save our YouTube thumbnail photography settings to custom dial number two. Sweet. So if I wanna shoot YouTube thumbnails, I can just switch to custom dial number two. And if I wanna go back to just plain old photography, I'll go to custom dial number one. And then let's see, anything else? I think I leave everything else the same for uh, for photography. Uh, no main changes there, quite happy with the default settings. And if you're looking for like a full explanation of the menu, Sorry, I'm not gonna explain. There's like so, so much information to unravel here. I'm just gonna go through my specific settings. But for photography, I think that's pretty much all the, the settings that uh, that I adjust on the camera. Yeah, everything I just leave to the default settings. Uh, I guess for this menu, uh, I guess one thing to, to go over is the subject recognition feature. Now the A7R5 has a dedicated AI processor to recognize specific skeletal movements like poses and all that stuff. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like you can see it more in video, like it'll track the eye very specifically because of that dedicated AI processor. Now there's one specific feature that I love with the uh, subject recognition and that's the face memory feature. And basically the camera can memorize a person's face and focus on that person the entire time you're shooting. It's very common in a lot of photography cameras, but not common for video like at all. And so if you're shooting something like a wedding and you wanna memorize the bride's face, then you just go down to this menu over here, go to face memory and click on the plus sign and you can take a photo of that person's face. And now the camera will focus on that specific person the entire time. And you can select multiple subjects as well. Like if you wanna focus on other people, you can memorize multiple people and set the priority when it comes to autofocus of those other people, which is, it, it's totally cool. It's, it should be a whole video in itself. I, I can't explain it now. It's, I'm just going through all the settings, but yeah, if you wanna set all that up, yeah, this is, this this is where you do it. Uh, uh, let's see, is that it? I think there's one more thing that I change in the menu settings. If you go to the toolbox tab, and then here is where you get to customize all the buttons of the camera. What's great is that you can customize buttons for photography and video separately, so that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and quickly uh, go through all those custom settings. All right, so for the rear of the camera, uh, I'm gonna change this to clear image zoom. Let's go to the zoom, let's select that. Go down, uh, I'm gonna change this to a, a different setting. I like that button to, to trigger my autofocus, but instead of using AF on, I use the the, the toggle option instead. And that way, if I just press it once, I can shoot manually. And if I press it again, it'll go back to autofocus. Uh, going down, uh, white balance. There, um, I like using uh, the focus area feature for that button. Just makes it easy for me to select, you know, shooting the wide focus area or at the center or in zones. So we're gonna go here, focus area. And then I'm gonna choose switch focus area. And that way I can cycle through all the focus area modes uh, very quickly. And then for this button, uh, I'm actually gonna select the uh, subject recognition. I'm actually gonna choose the the face memory feature because I probably will be using that feature very often with the a7r5. There we go. And here for the trash button, I'm going to customize it to, oh, I don't know. Uh, let's just select silent mode. There we go. All right, so that's good for there. Moving down uh, here, that's the joystick. I'm going to change that to uh, to something else. Uh, I'm going to actually change that to, uh, oh, actually, that's a cool option. Track recognition off toggle. So basically, if I've captured someone's face and I don't want to focus on that person anymore, I can just press the joystick button down to turn off that feature and I can focus on something else. Uh, let's see, the center dial. Uh, that's where I like having my, uh, my picture profile. For photography, I don't use any picture profiles at all, but if I wanted to, that's the button that I like like uh, using it. So go down to color tone and you're gonna select a uh, picture profile. And then uh, drive mode, I leave the same. Uh, let's see, ISO, I leave the same. The bottom, uh, I like using for white balance. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And then on the top, that's the button to record my videos. We'll leave that there. And then for this button, we're gonna actually choose APS-C or crop mode. It's because it's just right there next to your fingers. Just makes it super easy to zoom in on a shot. So we're gonna go to the top menu, go to image quality, select APS-C, slash full frame. 
So now I can trigger going into APS-C mode or go into full frame mode with that button. And then the, the button on the lens, uh, let's see, I don't really use the button on the lens, but if I were to use it, I'd probably do the, that focus zoom feature, basically just focusing on a shot and just adjusting the focus that way. That will be my focus magnifier. Again, I don't really use the button on the lens all that often. And so you can customize the button to be whatever you want. And then lastly, uh, the dials. By default, uh, the front dial is to change the aperture and the back dial is to change the shutter speed. I like reversing it because I come from a Canon background. I'm just used to that. And so we're just going to swap that. I'm going to select shutter speed. And then the rear dial, we're going to select aperture. And then for the corner dial, uh, I'll just leave that to exposure compensation. That's the standard setting for most Sony cameras. And so we're just going to leave it to that. And then finally, the rear wheel on the direction pad, uh, we're going to set that to change the ISO. There we go. And then here you can adjust uh, your video settings if you want to. I usually keep the same settings in photography mode for video mode. This makes it super easy for me to remember. And so we're just gonna skip all that. But yeah, if you wanna customize your very own video settings, then yeah, you can uh, do that there. And then uh, over here, the function menu, that's the quick menu that you can access by pressing the FN button on the rear of the camera. Uh, we're not gonna go over that at all. That's very subjective and you can use whatever setting you wanna put in that function menu. I kinda like the default settings in the function menu anyway. And so yeah, we're gonna leave that, but you can change that if you want to. And I think that's uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, cool, moving on to video. First go on the top dial and change it from photography mode to movie mode. And then you wanna make sure on the very top, it's selected to M for manual. All right, so now we are in movie mode. We're gonna hit the menu button and we're gonna start from the very top. Go to main menu number one. And the first thing that we're gonna change is our frame rate. Uh, I like shooting at 24 frames per second. Some people like shooting in 30 frames per second, but you know, I'm more of a 24p kind of guy. And then whatever frame rate that you use, you wanna double that value for the shutter speed. Uh, over here it says 1 250th of a second. Uh, that's going to result in very staticky looking motion blur. That's really good for like action sequences. But since we want normal looking motion blur, uh, we're just gonna change that to 1 50th of a second. And then going down, this is the ISO. That's gonna change depending on where you're filming, how bright it is, how dark it is. If you're shooting S-Log3, S-Log2, S-Cinetone, I'm just gonna leave it at ISO 100 right now and I can change it later. I like shooting an S-Cinetone with the A7R5. It's just the cameras look good straight out of the camera using S-Cinetone. Yeah, I could use S-Log3, but honestly, the A7S3 is probably the better camera to use if you wanna shoot S-Log. But since I'll be mostly shooting at Cinetone with the A7R5, I'm just going to set the ISO to 100 and then change from there. Uh, going down, uh, this is the picture profile. Like I said before, I like shooting at Cinetone. Uh, you're going to find that in PP11 uh, down over here. Uh, if you want to shoot S-Log3, that's going to be PP8. And those are like the main two picture profiles that I use with most Sony cameras. Uh, again, with the A7S3, I often like shooting an S-Log3. But with other cameras like the A7 IV and the A7R5, I really like shooting an S-Cinetone. So we're going to select PP11. And then next to it is the the, the white balance uh, for all my videos I like shooting in daylight it's just it just makes it really consistent uh, when I color grade later in post very rarely do I use auto white balance for a video but for for the most part like 99% of the time I like shooting in daylight and then moving down is the video file format there are several options that you can choose from really it kind of depends on how big your SD card is and how much your computer can handle compressed footage if you want to save space on your SD card and you have a very capable computer then you probably should shoot an H.265 which you can can find in these two options over here. That's XAVC HS 8K or 4K. I'm currently editing with the M1 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro and it can handle very compressed files like H265, but just to make it easier on my computer, I like shooting an XAVC S 4K. It's just a, a very well balanced file format. And if you don't want any compressed video files to work with at all, then you can choose either XAVC SI 4K or SI HD. But for me, I'm gonna choose XAVC S 4K. And then moving on to the next setting, that's gonna be your bit rate. Essentially, the higher the numbers and the more data there is in the video files, which is really good for color grading in post. And since I have a very capable SD card anyway, I'm gonna select the highest option, which is 140 megabytes per second, 422 10-bit video. Next setting, uh, that is the gamma assist display. That is more if you're shooting an S-Log3 or S-Log2. I'll turn that on because sometimes I'll use S-Log3 with the A7R5, maybe not as often as S-Cinetone, but since the gamma display assist is set to auto, which is over there. Whenever the camera detects you shooting an S-Log3 or S-Log2, it'll automatically correct it on your display to show a Rec. 709 image. And so with that, we'll just turn on Gamma Display Assist and leave it on auto. All right, moving on. All right, this is gonna be your audio record level settings. Uh, with most Sony cameras, I leave it to uh, audio record level 10. I just feel like it's a safe, number to record audio regardless of what mic you're using. You could probably push it to 15 if you want to, but I find that audio record level 10 is, is a 
pretty good number to, to start with. So we'll leave it at 10. Moving on to the next setting, that is gonna be your wind noise reduction. I don't use it at all. I think it sucks. And so we're gonna turn it off. And then last but not least on the tile menu, that is proxy recording. And if you don't know what proxy recordings are, uh, basically you're recording smaller video sizes along with the original video. And that's really more if you, if you don't have a computer that's very capable, like editing proxy video files are much easier to handle just because they're lower quality videos. And also using proxy files is very common if you have an editor, like your editor can edit the proxy files. You can have the original media. They can send you the project and you can swap out the proxy files with the original media and export higher quality videos. I don't do that since I have a very high capacity SD card and a very capable computer. And so I'm just going to turn this feature off. But if you want to turn it on, then that's totally up to you. All right, that's it for the first tile menu. Let's go to main menu two. Uh, here, I think I leave most of the settings the same. This setting here only applies if you're using APS-C lenses on a full frame body. The A7R5 will detect if you are using an APS-C lens, in which case the camera will go into APS-C mode. But since I mostly use full frame lenses, that doesn't really apply to me, but we'll just leave it to auto because I don't know, sometimes I use APS-C lenses. Moving on to the next setting over, uh, we've already set this. Uh, media card slot number one is where my video is going to be, and slot number two is where my photos are going to be. And so we don't need to do anything there. If you do want to record a backup of your video, you can actually record simultaneous video. Uh, you can do that with the next setting over. And if you go to the bottom, you can record simultaneous video, which is really great for backup. And I probably should be utilizing that more often. But since I like splitting my media card slots to photos and videos, I'm not going to be shooting simultaneously. And so I'm just going to leave recording video to slot number one. Moving down, uh, we have our steady shot. That's going to vary depending on what I'm shooting. I for the most part, standard stabilization is totally fine. With active stabilization, there is a crop factor, but it does result in smoother looking video. We'll keep it to standard for now. And if I need more stabilization, then I'll just switch it up to active. Uh, moving over, uh, that doesn't apply because we're already changing our video settings uh, manually. Uh, let's move over again. That's gonna be the file name. This is gonna be a little bit different to my photography file settings. With video, I like naming the video files with the date first, starting with the year, the month, and the day, followed by the name of the camera, and then the original file name. It just prevents like the wrong video file being imported if I need to go through my archive. First, we're gonna to go to file name format and change it from standard to date and title. So it's gonna show the date followed by the title and then the original uh, file series name. And then we're gonna to go to title name settings. And then uh, we're gonna change that to the name of the camera, which is A7R5. And then we're gonna to go to underscore. And now if you look at the bottom of the screen, it's gonna show the year first, the month, the day, then the name of the camera, and then followed by the original series name. And so with that file naming scheme, all my videos are gonna have specific names, which is great for archival purposes. Okay, so we're good there. Uh, moving on down, uh, we're just gonna leave that to continuous autofocus. Uh, makes sense for video. Uh, for the focus area, most times like shooting at a wide focus area is good because the autofocus is really good with A7R5. Uh, but for vlogs, I like shooting uh, with zones because I usually compose my head to the top of the composition right over here. But that's gonna be dependent on what you're shooting. But yeah, if you're confused and you don't know which focus area to choose, then just stick with wide. All right, so I'm good there. And then lastly, this is where you're gonna select the autofocus priority, whether it's a human, animal, bird, car, train, all that stuff. It's a, it's a pretty cool feature, but we'll just leave it to human for now. All right, let's go to the tabs on the left. Let's go down to the next page. Uh, uh, everything here we've already set. Uh, let's go down to media, uh, file. Nope, I think we're good there. I think we're good for the most part. Yeah, I think that's good. So now we're going to save these specific video settings to my camera. Uh, we're gonna go to this tab over here, go to shooting mode, and we're gonna go to camera set memory, and we're going to select number one. And so whenever I go to movie mode on the bottom dial, and on the top dial, I switch it to custom dial number one, that's gonna pull up these exact camera settings. Oh, and I know we made our custom photography settings set to custom dial number one, but that's for photography mode. Like in photography, mode, you have three different custom dial settings. When you switch to movie mode, you have three different custom settings. And when you go to SNQ mode, you have three different custom modes that you can set. And so, yeah, really cool that you have 9, 11? I think 11 custom modes uh, to tweak uh, on your own. So that's pretty cool. So those are my settings for shooting at 24 frames per second. I also like shooting at 60 and 120 frames per second. So I'm gonna change my camera to those settings now. All right, let's go back to the top of the menu. Uh, we're gonna change the frame rate to 60p. Uh, we're still filming in 4K, but we're gonna change our shutter speed to double the frame rate. Uh, the closest value that we can get is 1 125th of a second. 
There we go. We're gonna keep everything the same and we're gonna save those settings, my 4K 60 settings uh, to the camera. So we're gonna go to this tab option, go to this page, go to shooting mode, camera set memory, and we'll save it to custom dial number two. Very cool. And lastly, we're gonna change it so I can film 120 frames per second. You can't film 4K 120, only HD. And so uh, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go down over here. We're gonna go to image quality, go to file format, and we're gonna change that to XAVCS HD. And then you're gonna go down to the movie settings and you're gonna select 120p and make sure that you're at the highest bit rate, which is that. You can also change it in the main tile menu right over here, same exact menu. And since we're filming at 120 frames per second, you wanna double that value in the shutter speed. And so double 120 is 240. There is no 240 uh, option here. And so we're gonna change it to the closest possible value, which is 1 250th of a second. And I think that's pretty much it. And so we're gonna save those settings uh, to the camera, go back to uh, the tab over here, go to this page, go to shooting mode, camera set memory. I'm gonna save that to custom dial number three. Cool, so those are my settings for slow motion. I also like shooting slow motion using SNQ, and so we're gonna change some settings in SNQ to film slow motion as well as time lapses. First things first, we're gonna switch to SNQ mode on the top dial, and then on the top, make sure that we're still on the M. All right, so I'm gonna go into the menu, and then we're gonna go over here to SNQ settings, and we're just gonna change the record frame rate to 24p because that's what our playback should be. Uh, the frame rate, uh, we'll just say, uh, let's just do 60 frames per second and the highest bit rate, of course. Go back to the main tile menu, change our shutter speed to 1 1 25th of a second. There you go. And then we're gonna go back to the tab. We're gonna go to shooting mode and we're going to save those settings to custom dial number one. So that's 4K 60. Uh, let's change it to film in 120 frames per second. We're gonna go to image quality, go down to SNQ, keep the record frame rate the same. We're gonna change the frame rate to 120 FPS. Make sure that the highest bit rate is selected. Cool, cool. Go back to the main tile menu, change the shutter speed to double the frame rate, which is 1 250th of a second. Very cool. We're gonna save those settings. Go back down to shooting mode and camera set memory to number two. And the last setting that we're going to adjust is our time lapse setting in SNQ. Uh, to do that, let's go back to SNQ settings. We're gonna choose two frames per second, again at the highest bit rate. We're gonna go back to the main tile menu and uh, our shutter speed, we're gonna change that to about one eighth of a second. Having a low shutter speed like that, it's just gonna allow for more motion blur. And if you really wanna be dramatic, you can go to one fourth of a second. But I feel like one eighth is, uh, is, is pretty good and so we're gonna leave that there. And we're gonna save that setting, go down to shooting mode, camera set memory and save that to number three. So now if I wanna film 4K 60 in SNQ mode, I can go to custom down number one. If I wanna film 120 frames per second in SNQ, I can go to custom down number two. And if I wanna film time lapses, I can go to custom down number three in SNQ. And I, I think that's pretty much it. Those are my settings for the Sony a7R5 for photo, video, and SNQ. I know that was a super long setup guide, but hopefully this was helpful to you. If you have any other questions about the camera, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you wanna download my a7R5 camera settings, the link to that will be down below free of charge. But other than that, ladies and gents, that's the video. Thanks for hanging out with me. Much love to you all, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.